What's up, challengers? Welcome to the gym. My name is Gym Leader Geo, and this is week two of the locker room. We are going into week two of season four of the GBA against Miguel, aka Mega Mogwai, and his team, the Real Marils. Now, the Real Marils team, um, he could be bringing potentially six of the following 11 Pokemon Mega Lopunny, Thunderous Incarnate, Victini Hydreigon, Florgis, Dewblade, Stoutland, Tentacruel. Chestnut, Escavalier, or Hippowdon. And uh, going into this, I of course did all the calcs with uh, fairly standard EV spreads, adjusting things here and there, adjusting natures, and looking for any potential trump card super effective hits that any of those Pokemon might be carrying for any of my Pokemon. And I sort of played that game and then tried to put together what I think he'll be bringing of those. So my prediction for him um, for the six Pokemon he will bring is much like it was with Hank, not something that I'm super certain about. However, looking at his team and who does the most work to me, my prediction is that I have four Pokemon of his that I'm fairly certain he's bringing, and then there's uh, another three or four that in any specific or you know, non-specific order might be there with each other. So let's go over that. I predict he's going to be bringing Mega Lopunny, Hydreigon, Victini, Thunderous, and then some combination of Hippowdon, Stoutland, Tentacruel, and or Chestnut. Um, the most likely situation... I mean, I've gone through this scenario a couple of times in my head, and I'm not sure what Miguel's strategy is going to be for this game. If he wants to go hyper offense, he'll bring Hippowdon and Stoutland. Um, if he wants to go more hold me, wear me down with his walls and play some intelligent switch games, he'll probably bring Chestnut. Chestnut is one of his best answers for Mega Swampert, but um, I have a few answers for that Pokemon of my own. So, But if he's bringing Chestnut, then I don't think he's going to be bringing Hippowdon, but he might. It's hard to say because they do cover each other relatively well, but... I just, I can't see him not bringing Tentacruel because if he doesn't, he doesn't have a way to get rid of any hazards. But all of that led me to the current context that I had to build for what my strategy is going to be going into this match. And, you know, I talk, I, I gotta say a big thank you to Mighty Mamoswine and Hank the Pidgey. You guys talked me, talked to me a lot this last week. Um, Last week I kind of went at it alone, all that team building, it's really time consuming, really lonely, and I, you don't always see all of the ins and outs of a team in your preparations, and I really, really appreciated that uh, you guys helped me out with some ideas, some thoughts about what we could do. So thank you guys so much for that, it's a lot more fun to prepare for GBA battles with other people, so really appreciate that guys. Um, one of the things that... Uh, was suggested to me was take note from people who have beaten Miguel in the past and one thing is that uh, One thing I've seen that he's only lost a few matches in the GBA format um, One of those was his first playoff game first round of the playoffs against Fufu uh, Sam uh, I think uh, another one was uh, against Gubs last season and I'm going to take note from that, because what Gubbs did was catch him off guard, put pressure on him, and make him play under pressure. So I want to do the same thing, and the way I'm going to go about doing that is by bringing hazards. So let me introduce you guys to the six Pokemon I'm going to be bringing to this match, and then I'm going to once again discuss my issues that I had with bringing Ditto, of course, because that seems to be something that's going to happen every week, should I bring Ditto. And uh, this week I opted not to, and I'm going to explain that. As you can see, I am bringing the rain this time. we got a beautiful rain here, and part of my thought process there was it... He doesn't take that much of a benefit from it. There's a few Pokemon that can learn Thunder and run Thunder over Thunderbolt, but I'm not too concerned about that. It weakens Fire-type attacks, and he's got a Victini. It's, I think, mandatory because I'm bringing Scizor. I'm also bringing another Pokemon that's weak to Fire in Scullopede. And it gives me the potential to have a Swift Swimming... Um, Mega Swampert, and I think all those things combined are going to be a big help for me in this matchup. So let's go over a couple of these sets, and uh, I'm just going to go ahead and draw a mountain over here so you guys have something beautiful to look at. Maybe just like a scenic mountain, maybe perhaps a babbling brook 
running through, uh, kind of running through here, and it's, as it gets closer to you, the Babylon Brook gets bigger and bigger. Um, draw some little water lines here, and you know what? Maybe there's a fisherman sitting in a nice chair over here. He's just sitting here, and he's, you know, he's got like his little fisherman's hat on. I'm gonna draw a cloud up here too, and of course he's. He just wants, he wants a little trout. What's wrong with fishing for a little trout, guys? Nothing wrong with that. So, you guys can go ahead and look at that. Uh, maybe draw along if you have any pictures at home that you guys are interested in drawing in. Go ahead and pull out your uh, X-Split drawing tools and just go ahead and do that. So, let's go over the team I'm bring <laughs> Let's go over the team I'm bringing and uh, why I'm doing it. Also, sorry for my voice, guys. It's a little hoarse because I was yelling um, a lot yesterday. Too much. And... That caused me to um, damage my vocal cords in a way such that I'm having a difficult time communicating with y'all. So let's go over who I'm bringing one at a time and why. First, we're going to look at Mega Swampert. Now, Mega Swampert, as far as I'm concerned, is my win condition in this match. Mega Swampert uh, packs in this set I'm bringing Waterfall, Earthquake, Ice Punch, and Stealth Rock. Now, uh, the last move slot was kind of a toss. I didn't know whether or not I wanted um, a fighting stab like superpower um, or power up punch or refresh. And the reason I opted, refresh was the big one that I was considering because a burn would kind of ruin me. Here's the reason I didn't end up going for refresh and I went for stealth rocks. The way I'm going to opt to try and get Uncle Buck in is off a U-turn. I have two U-turners on my team. I'm going to try and get him in off that. I also have a baton passer, so there's a lot of ways for me to get Uncle Buck in. I will see status coming. The Pokemon on his team that I anticipate that are going to be able to deal out status are Thunder Incarnate, or Thunderous Incarnate packing T-Wave, which won't affect me. Florgis, who could be packing Toxic, but... I don't see Floor just staying in against me. Dublade could also be packing Toxic, but again, Dublade doesn't want to be taking an Earthquake from me. And Tentacruel getting the lucky burn off of a Scald. Now, in all of these situations, I would rather have Gudra in against those Mons, and I would feel safe switching Gudra in directly against all of them also. So, in almost any situation where those Pokemon come in, I'm not going to risk letting myself get status. I don't see any hacks statusing me, like real hacks options statusing me. Um, outside of maybe if Victini's special runs blue fire, or what is it? Yeah, blue flare and burns me or something like that. But I really just don't, I'm not that worried about status for Mega Swampert, so I opted not to do that. Another thing is that he's going to have a Swampert counter and he's gonna go immediately into panic mode as soon as Swampert hits the field every time he hits the field and he's gonna switch in those uh, those counters it's my job to see who he thinks he, uh, he needs to bring and needs to switch in on me whenever he sees Mega Swampert and for that reason Stealth Rocks is a really good scouting move early game I can you know early on in the match when I don't know for a fact who he's gonna switch in at any given time the likelihood of it being Chestnut is incredibly high, but I don't know that right off the bat. So I'm going to use Stealth Rock, I'm going to set up those hazards that I was telling you about, get some chip damage up there, and really scout what he's doing. Um, as we were discussing earlier, whether or not he's going to bring Tentacruel. Tentacruel doesn't match up very well against my team. It can take advantage of the rain, and that's good, but... Against the rest of my mons, I just, I'm not super concerned with what Tentacruel can do for me. Um, I can one-hit KO it with Mega Swampert's Earthquake. Um, I probably wouldn't switch in on it. I might stay in on it, but I would be scared that it's a physically defensive set, so if I haven't gotten any damage on it, that's not great. We're going to skip down to Scallopede so we can talk a little bit about my Scallopede set, because this is probably one of the sets that I think is going to bring the most... Uh, interesting options to my team today. So what Scallopede is bringing is Endeavor, Toxic Spikes, Swords Dance, Baton Pass, and his item's not on there yet, but it's going to be uh, Focus Sash. And my goal here is Scallopede lead. And the circumstances where I won't be leading with Scallopede is if I look at his team matchup and I'm concerned um, that I just got a text from a co-worker, sorry about that. 
I'm concerned that if he leads with Hippowdon, that he will be able to hurt me with an attack and then have the sand kill me, finish me off. But the goal with this Scallopede is get Toxic Spikes up. One set is great, actually maybe even better than double, because while badly poisoning is great for taking out walls, the things I'm most concerned about in his team are actually... Oh, connection with the server was interrupted. That's not good. The thing I'm most concerned about are not his defensive Pokemon, it's his offensive core. So, those Pokemon are very nimble. They U-turn, they're a Volt Turn core, so they switch in and out a lot. Victini runs U-turn, Thunderous runs Volt Switch, Hydreigon can run U-turn, although I don't think it will. I need to get immediate damage off and having Stealth Rock damage take 15, or, you know, it depends on the Pokemon, but Thunderous Eye and Victini both take 25% from it. That, mixed with the fact that they'll get poisoned and be taking one eighth every turn, I think that's better, because it takes three turns for Toxic to do as much damage as a regular Poison. I don't know if people know this. Regular Poison does one eighth of your health every single turn. Badly Poison starts at one sixteenth, then becomes one eighth, then becomes three sixteenth, or whatever. I, I forget exactly how it ups. I think it's that way. So after three turns, you'll have broken even with normal poison. I don't predict any of his Pokemon are going to be staying in that long. I mean, there's going to be a lot of movement in this game, I can tell, because it's a lot of trying to get that positive matchup. So for me, getting one layer of Toxic Spikes up is actually going to be a really good thing. If he brings me down to my Sash, I'm going to endeavor him next turn and bring that Pokemon down to one HP and maybe go down in the process. That way I can bring in a Pokemon with not a whole lot of hitting power and just clean up next. Maybe that could be my scissor with a bullet punch or something along those lines. So it, it felt like, to me, I don't really, I'm not anticipating using Scullipede to take out someone in a one-on-one -on -one basis. He's a support Pokemon for this match. I threw Swords Dance and Baton Pass on him in case Mogwai makes a really strange lead play that gives me a huge opportunity to do something with this. Um, for example, if he were to not like his matchup turn one and switch on me as I go for the toxic spikes, and then next turn while I'm at full health, I might be able to get a swords dance off and baton pass out or something like that. I mean, it's, it's situational. I could have put coverage moves there, but, uh, I'm, Scallopede is an interesting mon for this team because he's a defensive set. I don't know if you guys have noticed this. He's impish with full HP and defense. Um, I know this is not an uneven HP number, meaning he'll take extra damage from rocks. I'm not anticipating him surviving long enough to have to come in against rocks. We'll see. I mean, obviously, this is, this is my thought process, but the game changes when you actually get into it. So, Scallopede is there for that specific purpose. After he gets up his Toxic Spikes, I'll consider two layers if I really think it's necessary. I'll have to gauge that based on his, the team he's bringing. Miguel's got a lot of threats. He's got a lot of Pokemon that match up pretty well. And the thing about this game is that I'm much less confident in the Pokemon he's going to bring than I was against Hank. I felt like with Hank, I knew exactly who he was going to lead with and exactly who he was going to bring down to the sixth Pokemon. Um, and Miguel, I'm, I'm not so certain about a lot of things. One of the things I definitely note is that Hydreigon is almost certainly coming, and so I have to be prepared for that. Victini is almost certainly coming, and I have to be prepared for that. A lot of the other Pokemons could be yes or no's, even though I think they are going to come. Megalopunny and Thunderous, for example. Megalopunny, I think, will come because um, Hydreigon covers Megalopunny really well. If you're anticipating a Psychic-type attack or whatever, Hydreigon's got that free switch in and can really punish that. Thunderous Eye doesn't match up that well against my team, but has a lot of support options it can bring to the team. Fast Thunder types in this, thunder, light electric types in this league are very, very, very strong. He's got great coverage. He's hard to take down. So I think Thunderous Eye is coming too. I don't see Dewblade coming. Florges could come if, but it really depends what he's going for with a Florges set. Um, I actually would hope he would bring Florges. I'm actually excited for that. Chestnut to counter the uh, the Swampert, of course, but it is all kind of playing into the the theme that I've got going on here. Um, Dollar Bills is my <laughs> 
is my Politoed. And Politoed is going to be bringing Scald, Ice Beam, Protect, and Encore. The, and he is Calm, Max, Special Defense, and HP. The reason I am bringing Dollar Bills in the way that I'm bringing him, obviously I'm going to make it rain with Dollar Bills right now, guys. And uh, he's going to be carrying the Damp Rock. Obviously, I don't have it on him at the moment. Dollar Bills um, has Protect because if he's ever finds himself in against a Mega Low Punny, I need to scout for that high jump kick. Um, potentially having him injure himself. I'm actually not predicting Miguel to bring high jump kick on his Mega Low Punny if he brings it. I'm predicting him to bring like a drain punch or something like that. I, do, I really don't see him bringing, um, bringing high jump kick. He's probably going to be too concerned that I'll run protect on things to try and get him down with that. So, you know, it. Mega Low Punny does a number to my team. I have a lot of Pokemon that can survive a hit and hit it back really hard. And... Mega Low Punny is one of the big reasons, as I stated before, that I want to play this pressure game. I want to hazard stack with him. I want to get those Toxic Spikes up. I want to get those Stealth Rocks up. I want Mega Low Punny to come in and take damage. I want to limit the number of times it can revenge me. And um, I want to get Mega Swampert in against him in the rain when he doesn't have full health. Because Mega Swampert can't one-hit KO him with a Waterfall in the rain. He can do 92%-ish. Um, there's a chance to one-hit KO, but it's not a guarantee. So I want him to have sustain some damage on the end. I want Rain up, and I want Mega Swampert to come in and finish it. That's going to be the name of the game, guys. I need to prepare the field of battle. Uh, I need to hit him, with the, hit him with the Toxic Spikes, potentially hit him with the Stealth Rocks. At some point in the match, I'm going to try and whittle people with some of my other Pokemon. And then I want this duo, dynamic duo here, to run train on his team. Mega Swampert can hit these Pokemon incredibly hard. Running their standard EV sets, I haven't played with anything unique here. Um, Mega Swampert, minimum damage rules these are, guys. I always do my calcs with the minimum that I could possibly hit them for. Mega Swampert hits Mega Lopunny for 92%. Thunderous Eye for 107%, both with Waterfall. Victini for 116, a one-hit KO guarantee. Hydreigon with 68 um, with an Ice Punch. Florgis at 67, Waterfall in the Rain against a physically defensive set. Dewblade, 58% with an Earthquake. Stoutland, 84%, Waterfall in the Rain. 104% Tentacruel with an Earthquake. Chestnut, 33% with an Ice Punch. Escavalier, 70% with a Waterfall in the Rain. And Hippowdon at 48% with... Uh, I think I factored that as a waterfall not in the rain. So, as you can see by those numbers, which I rattled off a little quickly, but um, the important thing to note is that I've done my math, and even with low rolls constantly, I'm pretty much almost one-shotting everything. So, a little bit of hazard stack damage, and getting a swift swinging Mega Swampert in on stuff, he's going to be outspeeding pretty much his entire team. I have counted on that by my calculations. So the thing that I need to scout for as soon as possible is who is his choice Scarfer? I don't think he's bringing two. If he does props to him, he deserves to be on play of the week with something like that. I predict he's bringing one choice Scarfer and that's gonna be the big, the big key for me is who is it? Because I can still outspeed some of these guys if they're choice Scarfed, but my EV spread is set to perfectly outspeed Mega Low Punny if it's Jolly. I don't think he's going to be running positive speed natures on anything except Scarfers because he knows his team outspeeds mine innately. So I took that into account while I was doing my calculations. I think Mega Low Punny will be adamant. Um, I think Thunderous Eye is probably his most likely Scarfer, but doesn't need to be. Um, I can kind of scout for that a little bit. Um, but if it's Prankster, I think it's probably going to be Life Orbed. Potentially, it's going to be Life Orbed with Nasty Plot. And that's something I'm kind of like a little concerned that it might be. Maybe he hits me with a Thunder Wave. And then uh, on my predicted switch, he might go for a Nasty Plot. I'm prepared to deal with that. Victini is a potential Scarfer. Victini, like I said before, is going to be a big issue for me. I don't know if it's going to be special. I don't know if it's going to be physical. And it could very likely be mixed. Because it does a number to my team as the physical set, except that it's walled by Swampert, unless it carries Grass Knot. So it's likely to me, if I were him in my in this exact situation, I would run a physical Victini with just enough investment to guarantee one hit KO a bulky Swampert with Grass Knot. That's what I would do personally. And 
that's going to be a problem for me. However, without sufficient investment and without a choice scarf, he's not going to be outspeeding me and I can one hit KO him back. So that's going to be my big thing is figure out Victini's item as soon as possible. Part of the reason I really struggled with not bringing Ditto is that Ditto is an incredible Victini counter. I can switch it on Victini and anything that I think it's likely for Victini to carry. Let's go over the best moves he has on his moveset. That's V-Create or Blue Fire if he's special, Blue Flare. Uh, Thunder or Bolt Strike if he's special or, phys yeah, special or physical. Uh, Grass Knot for Mega Swampert. And I'm predicting either U-Turn or Zen Head, but probably U-Turn. And that's regardless of the set he's going to be bringing that. He could be bringing Psychic if he's special. Those are the potential move slots that I see him bringing on that Victini. And I predict that's going to be... I, I think I'm, I think if I know that he's done his calcs, I'm sure he has. That's going to be what he thinks is going to be the best setup against me. So I predict he's going to be physical mixed if he's really playing smart in his team prep. That's a problem. Um, I need to know what item he has because if he's running a band, then that changes a lot of things for some of my defensive switch-ins. However, it also gives me a lot of prediction to counter-attack him, especially with, uh, you know, set up possible mons and stuff like that. Um, it could be a problem for me, and I just need to see whether or not he's getting locked into stuff. I need to find out whether or not he's Scarfed. Because if he's not, then I feel safe coming in with Mega Swampert and taking him out that way. That's the thing about uh, Victini that I'm most concerned about. Let's keep going through the other Pokemon I've brought. I'm taking a while here, guys. I apologize for that. But I just like talking about my team. And I hope you guys do, too. So, otherwise, maybe the locker room is not the right video for you guys. Um, I'm going to talk about my Gudra here, Bunny Sore. Uh, Gudra, uh, thank you very much, Mopman. Mopman579, uh, he responded to my Twitter request. I needed this guy, Jen, because I, I didn't have time to breed him. I've had a really crazy week, guys. So this Mon is running a modest, full special attack, full HP set. Uh, he is running Hydration for to take advantage of the rain. And I'm running Leftovers, not Assault Vest. Um, here's why. As you can see here, this moveset is not finalized, but those three moves are. I'm running Dragon Pulse, Acid, Armor, and Rest. You guys can see where I'm going with this. Gudra can come in on several Pokemon and force them out. The counters that he's going to switch in are going to be physical threats. He's not going to switch in a special against me unless it's Hydreigon. And even then I can survive and eat up a Draco Meteor and one hit KO him back with Dragon Pulse. Acid, Armor set up for defense. If I'm in the rain, I can get that rest off, fully heal myself, and immediately get back to full, recovering from any status. He's going to be my status sponge. Counter was here and might remain. I'm not sold on it yet. I might run Thunder. I might run Ice Beam. I'm not sure. It depends on... I'm going to do one final look at his team and see who I need Gudra for really. Like, really well and truly. Not trying to answer every single Pokemon. Because this set right here is the I'm gonna win with Gudra set. This is the I want to get up a couple of acid armors, then you can't touch me, and then if you bring in a physical threat, I'll counter you to death. If you bring in a special threat, I'll dragon pulse you to death. That's what this set is, main, is made for, and that's not what I wanna do with Gudra. Gudra needs to be selectively whittling people, he needs to cycle through mons, he needs to force some switches, he needs to get people poisoned, and uh, work through the team that way. So I don't think I want counter there. Uh, I could opt to go for rain dance, for example, to ensure that I can keep the rain up on my own, even if Polito goes down, so that I have a backup plan to still sweep. That's sounding, as I talk about it out loud, that's probably more likely what I'm gonna do. But the, the big thing here is that Gudra needs to get an acid armor up. And if I can do that, that is incredibly beneficial for my team and it's going to give him a lot of problems in taking out Gudra. Um, Scizor is the Pokemon that I had one of the hardest times deciding to join my team. It was between him, Ditto, and Moltres this week. The reason I opted to bring Scizor is that uh, Priority is incredibly useful against whittled down Pokemon. He's a potential late game sweeper alongside Mega Swampert. 
He can provide some much needed slow U-turns. Let's look at his set. He is running Bullet Punch, U-Turn, Aerial Ace, and Defog. And he is running Adamant, full HP and attack, uh, with one extra point put into, I believe, special defense. And he's running Oka Berry to reduce fire type damage. In the rain, with an Oka Berry, he survives a fire blast from a High Dragon and gets a U-Turn off, uh, hitting him for uh, 126% minimum roll damage. No, I'm sorry, that was calculations done with the Choice Band. Ha but either way, it's still going to do a massive amount of damage, and that can bring me into a situation where I could potentially switch in Mega Swampert next for free, uh, not having to take a damage from the Hydreigon and proceed to sweep that way. Hydreigon, by the way, guys, also a potential Choice Scarfer for his team. Worth noting. So, um, took a long time, and a lot of people's uh, input, you know, both Hank the Pidgey and uh, Mighty Mammoth Swine talking me through what item I should hold. The reason I opted to go for Aka Berry is because something's gonna have fire. I mean, this is Miguel we're talking about here. He's got incredible coverage on his team and he knows who my threats are. He's gonna be packing grass moves and fire moves on everything he possibly can. Okaberry is going to help give Proto actually a position in this game outside of just maybe getting off one choice banded bullet punch. And the big concern here is that I need Proto to help me to ensure that I have something against Chestnut because Chestnut is the only red box I have on Mega Swampert's column. Mega Swampert can take on everybody. He just can't consistently take on Chestnut. Even a, a defensive set, even with an ice punch, I'm not breaking through that. However, Aerial Ace Technician Proto is going to hit that thing for uh, almost 50%. And meanwhile, he's going to be hitting back with, at the absolute strongest, a Hidden Power Fire for 51%. Weakened with the Oka Berry, ensuring that that's going to be a 3-hit KO. I will win that batch up just fine with 3 Aerial Aces. So, Chestnut... Um, the reason I didn't go banded is that Chestnut could likely run Spiky Shield and will probably run Spiky Shield and he's going to scout me first turn, I'm assuming, uh, to see what I potentially lock myself into, see if I have an item, and then he can switch into the appropriate counter as necessary. So it's to ensure that I don't lock myself into something and then put myself at a disadvantage giving him switch initiative. So, no choice band for Proto this time. I may live to regret this, but I think the Oka Berry could put in some work. It certainly covers my bases a lot. So, uh, that was the deal behind Proto. Bullet Punch, of course, is priority. Powerful Stab hits the likes of Mega Low Punny and High Dragon, Florgis, uh, Stoutland. Uh, pretty strong. Gives me a good cleanup option if someone's at low health. Uh, very useful with Endeavor, uh, alongside Endeavor for the Scallopede. U-Turn, of course, is mandatory for a slow scouting move. Aerial Ace, as I said, is a super effective hit against Mega Lopunny and Chestnut. It's going to be very useful in that regard. And then Defog, because uh, just in case things kind of go south, maybe I set up my hazards, and then he does bring Tentacruel. He gets rid of the Toxic Spikes by switching in, and then Rapid Spins away my rocks. And I got nothing left, and he gets Toxic Spikes up on my side. Proto is going to come in. Say F you to that burn potential chance and just defog that ish away because I'm not playing that. I'm not playing those games, guys. I'm not going to let him st hazard stack on me, even though my team is not that weak to it. This is not a team that is weak to hazards, guys. Look at this. The only person that's going to take significant damage from Stealth Rocks is right here. But um, the potential here is that Chestnut can run regular spikes, Hippowdon can run rocks, and Tentacruel can run poison. Uh, toxic spikes, that is. And you know what? Thinking about that out loud, that's a very potential tri-core that he could be bringing there. Tentacruel, Chestnut, Hippowdon forms a water, grass, ground core, which is runs almost as effective as fire, water, grass, if you actually look at that. Um, it's a very defensive core. Chestnut is a, a powerful physical attacker with good defense. Same with Hippowdon, and Tentacruel can be a special wall. You pair that with the likes of Victini, Megalopunny, and Hydreigon, and that's actually a pretty powerful six Pokemon team, which is likely to show up, actually, if he opts to go for the Hazard Stacking route. I don't know what he's going to do, honestly. Um, it's possible that he will go for Hazard Stacking, but against my team, that's not as useful as, I'm going, as it's going to be for me to Hazard Stack against him, because once I get Mega Swampert in on the rain against Pokemon without full health, 
I'm in a really good position. So, my last Pokemon I'm going to go over is Mesprit. Mesprit is here to provide me with a Choice Scarf option and uh, a Pokemon to take out Mons that otherwise I have a difficult time kind of dealing with. Uh, Mesprit can survive. Let me show you the set that I'm running with Mesprit. Uh, he is a um, not full speed, but highly invested speed, fully invested in special attack with a good amount of HP. Uh, Mesprit 2 Chains is going to be running Psychic, Ice Beam, U-Turn, and Trick with a Choice Scarf. Trick is going to be useful for ruining the likes of Pokemon like Chestnut, for example. He's a great switch into Chestnut, my second answer to Chestnut alongside uh, Scizor. He can switch in on just about anything Chestnut has. The highest amount of damage Chestnut can do to me is with a Wood Hammer and it's not even a 2 hit KO. Uh, meanwhile, I can hit him back with a Psychic for about 70% if he's not specially defensive invested. Um, I also am packing an Ice Beam on him. Uh, largely, that's to take care of Hydreigon. Uh, pretty much every other Pokemon I use Psychic on, except it's a little bit stronger on Thunderous also. So that's why I opted Ice Beam over Thunder. Um, I could have run Thunder, but I, you know, to help me with Tentacruel, but a Psychic hits it just as hard, and I just, it didn't feel like a, an important move to bring for me. U-Turn, of course, I could get a fast U-Turn off. It helps me get out of there. If Hydreigon's a likely switch in, for example, if I come in on a Mega Low Punny, and he predicts, or he's already figured out that I'm Scarfed, he's not going to stay in to eat a Psychic. He's going to switch out to Hydreigon. That's why Hydreigon's there, to eat up those Psychic attacks and wall break shortly after. So I'm going to want to get out of there with a U-Turn. Uh, Trick is, as I said before, going to absolutely hemorrhage a Chestnut. If I see a Chestnut, and I predict he's going to lead with a Chestnut, it depends on what his team build would be, I'm going to lead with two chains, and two chains is going to trick him first turn. Um, I don't need to be Choice Scarfed on this guy. It's useful to be Choice Scarfed, but I don't need to be Choice Scarfed. Notable things about Mesprit, um, he cannot do anything to Victini, not with this set. U-Turn is resist U-Turn is neutral, but doesn't do a lot of damage with a non-invested special attacker. Ice Beam is resisted, Psychic is resisted, um, and I don't want to trick a Choice Band onto a Victini. So this is not a good set matchup for me, and I don't have a great switch in for Victini. So one really bad potential situation is if I end up opting to lead with two chains and he brings in Victini as his lead, that's a horrible thing because I don't really have a very good switch in for Victini. Uh, not really at all. Uh, I guess Politoed is probably my best bet, but Politoed can't survive so Bolt Strike or Thunder. So, problems. So, that's that's the issue with two chains. I really hope he puts in work this time, guys. This is going to be my five teams, this or my six Pokemon for this week two of the GBA. I'm putting them in my battle box now, and... I'm really excited for this battle. Meg, uh, Mega Mogwai has been one of my longest supporters of my channel. I've been following him since he had fewer than 50 subscribers. Uh, we go way back. He was on my channel. He's on the statue. If you guys remember the statue from my before the GLG Returns series, I used to do that. And uh, he has his name on the statue. Uh, he and I did a side-by-side -side battle. We battled once before in the Pokemon D-League, and I think I made some good plays there. I think he made some smart plays too, and his team matched up well against mine, and he just ultimately kind of mopped the floor with me, had a 3-0 win against me. But I'm not predicting that this time, guys. I got to rep the San Francisco Giantes, and I got to show them that I'm not just some scrub to be... Um, to be trifled with. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you want to follow the GBA, please do so on Twitter. They have regular announcements, updates, and fun facts about uh, <laughs> about the game. Little fun interactive things for you guys. You can vote on who you think is going to win any given week. Information, uh, links to the website and all that. And I'm going to have a link to that in the description down below. Check out the GBA uh, YouTube for more videos by our analysts, people like uh, Ryquin and uh, Teen TV and U-Turn, or U-Turn Crobat, Crobat for the win. Sorry, not U-Turn Crobat. Crobat for the win, Danza. And all just great guys, honestly, one and all. Please do check out that. Check out my opponent's channel. That's also going to be in the description down below. Thank you so much for supporting me. Please hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. The match will be coming, the video after this one. So until then, my name is Jim Leader Geo. You guys are the challengers. Thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you guys next time.